Kiwi Squash Cast is an in-season pod and vodcast for New Zealand squash fans. Each episode gives an update on the squash scene from a Kiwi perspective. We cover local and international pro squash and provide updates on domestic events. In each episode, we feature interviews with persons of interest and tips for your squash game. Message if you have content that demands to be on the show. Subscribe to our social media accounts for updates. What have you been up to since the big dub, the um, Eden Epsom, Doug Clint? I uh, did some rehab stuff yesterday at the gym, yesterday morning. What well, day was yesterday? Wednesday. So we played Monday, didn't do anything Tuesday. Yeah. Um, went to the gym yesterday and then Louis couldn't hit because his ankles, so I hit with Jay Nation and Dad yesterday afternoon. <laughs> And then today, asked Finn. Finn's not around. He said he had coaching last night. And then I see he's booked the court tonight with Zach. Okay. So I can't, can't ask him for tonight. But mm. I was just going to do a solo and then tonight. Oh, no, Louis going to give me a pressure session. That's right, this evening. Okay, I'm just going to cool. stay, stay in one corner. Yep. And then haven't really planned the next few days because Louis thinks he's going to be able to hit tomorrow, but he's going to see. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe right, but weather dependent as well because I'm pretty grim this week. Yeah, yeah, we're we're catching up on the old H two O. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's looking likely that the tournament's going to be on next week. Well, what's the word on Fokatani? Have you heard anything? Haven't heard anything. Haven't had any emails. Haven't heard anything. Still going ahead as of right now. I'm guessing. Yeah. Staying at Manaya's place, so they haven't messaged us saying it's not on. Yeah. So I think as long as Auckland goes level two, yeah. it should be all right. Otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting. In, in the past, we'd expect the rest of the country to go level one, but I guess they may not, so who knows? Or, you know, Because will they run the event, a big money event like that, if there's only 100 people allowed in the venue? I, look, I just wanted to talk about the... Eden Epsom event, and it must have been a bit of a roller coaster, dude. Because one minute we're locked down and what have you, and then the next minute you find out you can actually play. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was playing pretty well at those cl- at that club. You know, I won it last year, which was good. So I was pretty confident going into the tournament. Um, yeah, and I was pretty fortunate in that that um, each round got slightly harder. Like I had a good first round that I, I fired up for. And then um, a good second round where I lost a set. And then I got fortunate that my semi semi-final um, Elijah had a back injury. And then, yeah, fortunate that Louis then had an ankle problem in the final. But it was weird because it was hard trying to fire up on that last day, not playing at the same club. We, yeah, had, yeah, like, yeah. we had like 10 people come and watch. So where did um, you play? We played at Hamilton on the main court. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. Real dead, real different um, mm. at night. So it was pretty cold. Um, I soloed at Lugton in the morning. <laughs> different courts. Yeah. But um, they were pretty, they're pretty dead at the moment as well. So it was actually kind of similar. Yes. In a way. But yeah, it took a while for me and Louis to adjust. Like the first few points in the first game it was pretty neck and neck because we weren't really filling the court that well. Yeah. So it was a bit of like a shaky start. But yeah, it was probably the weirdest tournament I've ever played in terms of playing a final with like 10 people, having more more people watching my first round. Who ripped it, dude? Glenn Carson. Glenn Carson? Glenn Carson, <laughs> yeah, Glenn Carson. He was quite tough on me as well. Um, Like play, pretty much playing everything. Like even there was like one call that was pretty, I wouldn't say a blatant stroke, but pretty close. But I think, it was like the second point. It was like one all, and he, he just called it a yes let, and just straight away I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to play literally everything. So it was quite yeah. good. It was pretty free flowing. It would have been way different, obviously, if um, Louis didn't hurt himself in that final. But it was good because um, 
yeah, he made us play everything, which was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, you, and, and from the start, there was no warning, so it was just straight into it. No, I was straight into it. I didn't talk to him about anything. It was just straight into it. Um, yeah, there were probably like two strokes in the entire tie match, not many, both for Louis. They were like completely obvious as well, but heaps of yes lets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms okay. of movement and stuff, which was good, which was good. I see you commented on your video as well that you posted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thoughts about that? That got heaps of attraction. So yeah, was- yeah. We've got a decent number of views. It's quite interesting, actually, because um, uh, my lovely wife was a bit uptight about me doing these vids and sort of saying I was going to wind the refs up and that kind of thing. But um, I know that from uh, other vids that have gone well overseas that people are interested in this stuff. You know, people want to see decisions. They want to see slow-mos and they want to talk about them. Um, so, you know, I wasn't that surprised that we got a decent number of views. Then I put it on squash stories. We got an extra extra few views. So it's it's between sort of, it's getting close to like the 3,000 views now, which is, uh, you know, uh, good humor really. Yeah. Not good feedback. It was a slow-mo. You played it and then you played it back in the slow-mo. Just that yeah. Little, yeah. And that was really good. Because then you could, yeah. you could actually see it and it was interesting. Because it's way different when you're on court. Because I watched it back and I was like, Oh, that's interesting because I thought I made more of an effort sometimes. Whereas yeah. on the video, it doesn't look as much like you do. So it's good yeah. to like, it's good re- rewatch yeah. it. It's always a fine line with those ones too because you've got, um, you put in too much effort and you get warned for barging um, and you, you don't put enough effort in and they say, you know, not enough effort, didn't think you were going to get there. So actually having the video feedback is quite useful. Uh, for that, I think, yeah. Uh, one of the other benefits of video, definitely, yeah. yeah. That was interesting. More more parents and refs that come in today right, compared to players, which was yeah, interesting well. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, yeah. I mean, um, I felt bad tagging Terry in the second one um, at one point because I thought, well, I, you know, I hope he doesn't feel like, um, uh, you know, hammering the dude because I really was interested in his views and he took a lot of time and wrote quite lengthy answers to each of the decisions, which is really cool. And that's what we want. We want to get an insight into what the refs are thinking so that um, we can adjust. And, I, and then Glenn Carson came in and um, uh, did a very similar thing. So to me, that was very encouraging. That one was a double bounce. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, actually, the first, the first two were good because they were, they were actually quite similar, but the shot quality was, um, was mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like Gabe's shot quality was bad, whereas mine was good. And then actually changed what a lot of people gave, even though it was pretty much the same position, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you're right. And then also, um, it's a giveaway in the video because after the decision, um, Gabe actually applauds the decision, um, which is quite humorous. So obviously, he wasn't uh, um, upset about the the call. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think the pickup was interesting. Obviously, it's the wrong angle for a pickup, but it looked to me like his frame hit the floor, which made it look funny, which created doubt for the referee. But from what I could see, it looked like it was up. Oh, did you think? Because Louis thought it was good. Yeah, I thought it was good, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't think it was good. I thought he hit it twice. I, <laughs> yeah. didn't, I yeah. didn't think it was a double bounce. Mm, mm. I thought it was a double hit. I thought he hit yeah, it Yeah, it looks to me like he hits it on the edge of the frame. And... Different refs have a different view on that. Some have a view that say if you hit it on the edge, it's a double, and others don't. Others don't. So um, I thought it hit the front, like it hit the side, and then it flicked on the on the edge. Like I thought it, he literally hit it, hit the ball twice. Yeah, but I might have been completely wrong. No, no, it's a fair call. I think scoopage is always difficult to call. Um, and there was a couple of other calls during the tournament that were sidewall scoops, and they weren't called because because they're hard to call. I've taken a couple of days off the old ref videos. I'll fire up again today, um, and I've got your game with Evan. And I haven't put all the decisions in. I've just taken the goodies, and there's twenty. There's twenty of them. <laughs> so, I'm, to be honest with you, I might have to cut it. I might have to edit it. I'll watch it again because I think twenty could be overkill. But uh, all right. So um, you are third satellite. That's not too bad. I think that's probably putting you up the old New Zealand satellite ranking wins. A little bit behind your brother, but that's pretty good. You must yeah. be comfortable with that. And your rankings improved a bit. Um, it's heading in the right direction. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's good that um, I've passed another NZ player in terms of seedings for um, the tournaments coming up. Like I've got a, I've got a really good Morrinsville draw and um, could have had Louis second round if I didn't pass ET. Yeah. Did you notice that? So that was... Um, Absolutely, that, yeah, yeah. That was, that was good. I think PSA did me a huge solid there. Those yeah, points. they did. Yeah, well, well, I mean, because they, they did the rankings and you were below Elijah, and then they redid them with the the Doug Flint result, and that put you ahead. And you're right, that makes such a huge difference because he's got Louis in the quarters. Yeah, and that that's tough. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Well, it's the worst possible draw when fifth plays first in the quarters, and that's what he's got. That's what he's got. Yeah, and that would have been me. So, yep. yeah, shut up. Yeah, that's Peter. right. No, no, it's it's a goodie. Um, well, shout out to um. John Fletcher and Shelley and whoever else was involved in allowing you guys to play that final because 30 points yeah, yeah. is huge for you. Yeah, right big now. thanks to John Fletcher and the Eden Epsom Squash Club, everyone that did all the, all the nitty-gritty hard work behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, it was great. Um, I mean, a good tournament. Shame we didn't get to play the final, um, but we got there in the end. Um, you, can, you like playing there, dude. I mean, the old... Ceilings are a little bit low, but um, you seem to adjust, and they're quite true courts, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite true courts. I think um, I think they might be slightly dead at the back, like they die up. But it's still fast. Yeah, but I think they might. I think that's why I like them. I might. I might be wrong. What do you What do you think there? Because my yeah. games courts for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, to be fair, I think the current Dunlop ball for the last few years has been fast and slow if that makes sense so they tend to um die in the back corner so i mean we've played all these tournaments in the middle of summer and we haven't had these huge rallies with the balls bouncing everywhere you know a decent amount of cut and the ball dies in the back and um that seems to be the case with most of the courts we're playing on right now yeah 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 no i agree yeah i i really like that venue i like that main court uh, yeah, you, you kind of had a tough draw. Well, you had the match of the round in the first round up against Gabe. Um, and what I would say is um, really good to have those guys playing this tournament. And quite interesting quite interesting to see how they would sort of measure up because you, you just never know, do you? No, you never know. It was good to, it was good to have them back because they spiced up the draw a little bit because it's just yeah. been the same old players coming in and it's just who do you get first round. But that was juicy. Um, me and Gabe first round. Um, I know he hasn't had a very big off season, so he wasn't very fit. But yeah. you can see his shots were still there, so um, maybe a couple more tournaments for him to get stuck into. And um, yeah, we could see the old Gabe starting to come back, which would spice things up. And, Did you? Um, um, yeah, I felt he was a bit un, undercooked fitness wise. Um, I mean, obviously both the guys are going to benefit from those matches um, and adapting to that sort of intensity or level. Um, if they haven't been training at that level. Um, but I think sort of in Gabe's case, he's probably, there's probably a good couple of months worth of fitness to get to a level where um, he could compete consistently, you know. So I think he'll get better. I just think he'll struggle to play really well without a decent fitness block. Yeah, he will. He will. Yeah. I think um, I think it'll be good for him just to get stuck into these the first block of tournaments to just see where he's at, just in general, like, so yeah, that he's right. play everyone. Because he's, he's played me, and that's only, you know, I'm only one of the um, top players at the moment. So I think if he um, plays plays a few more people, sees where he's at, and then has a big block um, of probably purely fitness before the next tournaments, um, I think it should be enough hitting for him, these block of tournaments. Yeah. So it could, yeah. It could be interesting. It depends how he plays it, though. He might not be interested. He might be interested. So. Yeah, yeah, so, I, I think that's right. I mean, it's hard to know whether... Um, this was a bit, a, a bit of a giggle for the guys or whether um, they're going to come back and play a lot more. I mean, I hope they do come back and play a lot more because um, if tournaments are non-Challenger Tour events, the fields are going to be pretty patchy, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are, and they could get um, some solid draws. Mm. Mm. Yeah, if I was them, I'd get stuck in. Yeah. And then uh, we saw Matt in the second round against your bro, um, and what were your thoughts on that one? I was I was actually quite impressed with Matt. Very similar to how he used to play. Um, but he he could keep up with the pace more than Gabe. I felt, which was interesting. He's always played really fast, 
Um, but I didn't. I don't think he got too knackered. Like, I think he was physically not that bad. But um, it's just be getting more consistent, playing at that pace, especially against Louis. He's probably got. He probably plays the fastest out of all of us, um, out of all of the New Zealand players at the moment. I'd say his game is probably faster than Evans as well. Probably plays the fastest game, volleys more, um, hits the ball earlier. So it was, it was interesting. I thought he did quite well. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I'd say he died off a little bit. Like he won the first, <laughs> but then obviously he died off a little bit. But I thought it was going to be worse. So he did. He did quite well. Yeah. Quite yeah, it was a good. It was a good match. Um, he was competitive. Um, he handled the place pretty well. Um, Look, honestly, my personal view was that he's playing the wrong patterns in the front, and I think that that is going to hold him back a little bit. Um, uh, I guess he can adapt that possibly, but um, I, I was just watching it and just the, some of the choices and the timings and the shots that he was playing. Um, to me, I can see why he does that because it'd be very effective at the le- next level down, but at your guys' level... Um, I just feel he's got to change those patterns if he wants to compete um, consistently. Because it put a lot of pressure on his short balls. I mean, he tinned out a lot, made a lot of errors, and I know that you know he'll get better with that. But if you're playing those patterns, it puts pressure on hitting winners um, more so than other patterns, if I can say that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes but that'll be interesting. And yeah, and like you say, real good to see them. And hopefully um, they'll play a few more events. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good. It just spices up that draw a little bit more, makes things more interesting. Um, means the Because they're unseated, it means the first rounds, you know, are juicy, which means most rounds there's one, there's one good match that you're going to see. It's good for the live stream. It's good for the supporters, um, people coming to watch. Yeah, it's good for the clubs, so. That was pretty juicy having you guys up front. I mean, how many... You haven't beaten Gabe that often, have you? I think that that's my third time beating him. Okay, yeah. Probably like three and 40. Yeah, there's a few losses in there. That's right, yeah. Yeah, no, so from my selfish point of view as a live streamer, it was quite good having Matt playing upper because even though that was one-sided, it was interesting and then obviously your match with Gabe was huge um, and then from the quarters on was it was there were some pretty good matches all the way through so that made it a lot easier um, to sort of fire up for uh, what was going to be uh, put on the screen. Um, were there more views? Uh, we had a yeah we had a decent number of views I think Henderson was shared a bit more by PSA Challenger Tour and a few other um, sites overseas, but no, we got decent views all the way through. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, one thing I wanted to ask you about, and and is, um, I just want to talk about Joel briefly um, because I feel like he's in what I call a really good mode at the moment, and I say mode because you know it's not just shot choice, it's not just game plan. Um, there's about three or four things that have kind of gelled into a style of play that means he's got a lot more consistent and a lot more dangerous because he's becoming much harder to beat. Um, and we saw, um, did you see his match against Finn? Finn really struggled. Um, he really struggled there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah. So I kind of felt watching the tournament that uh, it'd be interesting to see yourself and uh, Luamba match up against that mode if I can call it more often but I think some of the some of the lower um, gr- uh, level players are going to really struggle playing Joel if he can stay in this mode because it's very difficult to break him down and his accuracy is just getting better and better yeah I think um, in a way me and Louis are lucky that we're training partners with him because we know his game very very well it's like all of us I know Louis's game very well he knows my game very well so things that um, other people would struggle with with us, like our weapons. Um, I, I feel like we don't seem to struggle with them that much because we, we're expecting them, and we we sort of we, we've had the same game plan for each other probably for like more, over a year now. So it was interesting to see that because um, I feel like in the Finn Joel match, Finn had no idea 
how to how to play Joel, how to beat Joel at all. And it yeah. was it was interesting because if if you don't have a game plan against Joel, then he's really good at picking you apart. And he just he just picked him apart to me. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I feel like he played Joel the previous week and he probably thought, hey, I'm fresher. I've had a week to think about it. Um, I'm staying with um, uh, Leper. Leper gave me a few tips. Um, I'm, I'm sweet. And then I think he rocked up and realized um, actually uh, it was going to be a repeat of last week and he kind of tapped out a little bit. And yeah, the first game was like six love and it just looked like he had no idea what hit him. Yeah. Joel played really well though. I felt Joel played really well. Yeah, I think I think he played well, and I think it's a style of, of play that is. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, we'd like him to be a little more aggressive and what have you, but um, it's a style of play that doesn't necessarily look that good until you actually get on court and have to match up against it. Yeah, yeah. Until until you um until you get on court and actually see what it's like playing him, you've got no idea. Yeah, that's right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. Um, I want to do a tip, some tips through this uh, podcast series, and I want to ask you for you for your tip for um, young pros coming through. So these guys that are still under 19 playing PSA, have you got a tip for them? Or maybe more than one, uh, but at least one. Think about that for a second, um, and I'll come back to it. Okay. All right. Now, but before before you answer that one. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. How are you going to get more consistent? Because when you're good, you're good. You're very good. Um, but you're not always as consistent as we would all like you to be. Um, what's your thoughts about how, how to improve that going forward? Um, I think a lot of it's off court for me. So making sure I'm in the right mental um I'm making sure I'm right mentally. So that means, um, you know, like doing, doing my rituals. So what I do before, before matches for tournaments, you know, getting, getting a solo in, getting a um, technical in with one of the boys, either Louie or Joel, um, getting enough sleep, eating the right food, um, eating three hours before, like all those, all those things are big things for me, I think. And um, in the, at the end of last year, when I had a few, bad performances because of inconsistency. I felt like I didn't do the off-court stuff so well. And um, I've focused a lot on game plan stuff as well this um, this off-season. And I think um, knowing what I want to do on the court um, hours before I get on court will make, makes a huge difference for me. Um, then, yeah, it just makes me more confident in what I'm trying to do and the patterns I'm trying to play. And I think when I have my pattern sorted before I go on, um, yeah, I, I, I'm a lot more consistent and I play a lot better. Um, I think a, a big example with that was playing even last year at Nationals versus playing him this year at Henderson. I had a way better idea of my patterns and his game style. And um, yeah, that made a huge difference, I think. I, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say my game was a whole lot better. I'd just say I did smaller things better. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think you were the second best guy at Henderson, um, which is not to in any way denigrate Joel's achievement making the final, but I think you played even fresher in the quarters. Um, and um, I, I'd say just by a hair, you were probably the second best at, at Henderson in my view. Um, so definitely you showed your level, just unfortunate with the draw that you had to um, lose out in the five in, in the quarters um, and obviously redemption this week at uh, Doug Flint. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see your kissing. The things you talked about are critical and it's what we call professionalism, obviously, um, doing all those details consistently. Um, and it, I guess the sense I get sometimes is that if you're playing players that you've beaten before, you don't always fire up as much. That's a huge one. Um, and so I'd probably say that's an area that you need to work on is um, getting some kind of um, thought process around firing up for matches where you think you're a favorite um, and doing a goal TA, basically learning to dispatch players um, faster. 
Yeah. And I think when you do that, because I, I, you know, it just increases your chances of going deeper into tournaments and winning more finals because you're going to get through sharper and more more refreshed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, what What's next for you? So we talked about Fokatani before, um, and hopefully that'll go ahead, and hopefully we'll get a draw shortly, um, and then the week after that's Royal Oak. You're going to play Royal Oak. Yeah, I'm going to play Royal Oak. Okay, yep. cool. I so wasn't. I was. I wasn't planning on it because of the ten k. I was. It was. It was depend dependent on how I went at Eden Epsom, but I think because the ten k is off, then um, yeah, I'm going to need the points for sure. Yep, and, and it's a Brucey bonus for Royal Oak because they were probably going to struggle in the men's draw, not the women's, because the women's is a three k. It's going to be very strong, and it's going to be the feature of that tournament. But they might have struggled in the men's, but it looks now they'll get. Um, at least you and Louis are both going to play where maybe you wouldn't have. Yeah, maybe we wouldn't have. Mm. Um, We've got Morrinsville, and the, the draws just come out for Morrinsville. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite good. I mean, I guess for a Challenger 3K, they might have hoped for a few more guys. In, in the cast last week, I said there are a bunch of guys not in the draw that should be in the draw, and I, I still stand by that. But it's still reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm just going to have a quick look at that. I was just looking at that before. There was someone who was missing that I was surprised about. Lance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's pretty busy with work now. So um, he did say to me he wasn't going to play it. Yeah. But there's a few guys that aren't playing. Yeah, yeah. After that, we've got Easter and then we've got New Zealand doubles. And um, you're all partnered up now by the sounds of it. Is that correct? Fully, fully partnered up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's got to be good. Right? I've got Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Louis and Grace. So that's that should be good. Should be interesting. I actually haven't played. Um, I don't think I've played with Grace yet at any of the doubles camps. Yeah. Okay. So not the star, but heaps <laughs> of room for improvement, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully they'll do those double sessions at Unitech on the Mondays, and hopefully, um. Hopefully Grace might be able to hang around for one of them um, and you can get some court time. That's what I was hoping yeah. after one of the um, Auckland, Auckland PSAs. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 All right, and then but after... Yeah, heaps of tournaments coming up. It's a juicy block. Yeah, it's a good block. And then we've got a couple of two, three, four weeks off, really, um, some junior stuff, and then Auckland Open. Well, Waikato comes back in, but Auckland Open's been moved to the end of May. All that. Yeah. Regional as well. Yeah, it's a redraw. So that's, again, that's good for you. You'll probably, hopefully by then, be um, a top four and um, get a nice draw. Yeah, hopefully. That would be very nice. You're drawn to play Louis in the second round. That was going to be tough for both of you. One of you guys missing out. Yeah. Yeah, one of us was going to get knocked out early. So that was a really tough draw for me. So in my my opinion, this is a blessing in, in disguise, really. If some other players are undercooked, I think. I'd rather a bit of draw. I think we have to look for the positives and all this stuff anyway. Um, whatever, whatever happens, um, you know, um, we kind of have to at some point do that, be resilient, look for the positives. And definitely for you, um, that's a huge positive. And for people at home that are uh, sort of sick of us ranting about draws and rankings, um, it does make a big difference. And I mean, for Paul Cole, for example, him going to four in the rankings makes a massive difference because it means he's not going to play a top four uh, ranked player in the quarters he's not going to play them till the semis and that's just one less hard match he has to play and at a much much lower level it's the same for you guys it just means you're not going to get um, a top seed early uh, in, in the tournament and, and you're going to get a result that better reflects your true playing level and so the hard work's starting to pay off I guess we'll be looking for yourself and Joel to get into the top 200 hopefully in the next month or so depending on getting out of COVID and what's played and what's not played. So how's your fitness level at the moment? Um, it's been a weird sort of a patchy kind of a block and we've been tapering and all that kind of stuff. What have you been, are you, are you very confident with what you're doing? It's actually hard to know because, I mean, I've, I've felt good in the tournaments, but I've only really had one tough match this season, which was against Evan. And um, I definitely... Um, I was definitely tired in that match and that probably showed in the fifth set when 
when he went away when we were quite close um, at, at the beginning of that set. But um, after that, I haven't actually had many tough matches. Yeah. Like, I only got one set at Eden Epsom against someone who I was quite confident um, against. And I was, yeah, I was quite confident I was going to win. So it's quite hard. It's hard to know. Like, I can't really, I, I feel fit, but I'm not going to say I'm extremely fit or slightly undercooked because it's quite hard to know. There's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a gap there. So I'm not, I'm not too sure. Can't really, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's a good point. I would say that you're going to be losing a little bit of fitness in these tournament weeks. Um, and you'll gain match fitness, but you'll lose um, base fitness. That's, yeah. um, not too much because you're generally topping it up um, outside of the tourneys. Um, but so I'm, doing yeah. bit, I'm doing a bit during the weeks and I'm going quite, I think I'm going to be going quite deep into these tournaments. So I think yeah. if I was losing like um, a lot of second rounds or first rounds, then I'd lose a lot more fitness, base yes. fitness. Yeah. But um, I think because I'm going, I, I tend to be going quite deep um, so far, and hopefully in the next few tournaments I do as well. Um, that should help quite a bit. Yeah, obviously I'm still going to lose fitness because I'm tapering and whatnot. But yeah, I'm still doing top ups sessions the day the day after the tournaments, the day after I lose pretty much. Um, yeah, I'm still having only one rest day a week, even if it, even if I'm just doing recovery sessions during yeah. the day. So. Um, yeah. Well, the big, big thing for you was really um, sort of November, December 2019, where you really had a decent block um, of training and really made a few physical breakthroughs um, aerobically and in, in, in other areas. You started to get payoffs with the mobility side of things, and then that paid off in terms of your movement to the front, which was a weakness before. And I feel like um, that was that particular period of time was. Um, hugely uh, important to you to make those changes and now you're still improving but not at the same rate physically um, and no yeah yeah um, and I guess it's a question of you know um, at some point over the next period of time how prescriptive we get about you needing to improve in certain areas um, everything's at a nice even level movements a lot better you're much better into the front um you're getting a bit like louis where you go around players rather than you still bump into them but you're more likely to go around and pick up the ball at the front um that mobility you've got now uh, allows you to get in and out of the front quickly um and and you've got options now you can play straight from the front which you weren't able to do before which is cool. Um, so I think you've got a nice base. I think your fitness is probably around that sort of median level. And it's just a question of, um, I mean, definitely when you go overseas and you come up hard matches every round, um, that will be a, a, a real wake up call to say, okay, I think I know what I need to work on. Um, whereas it's a bit difficult in, in the current environment where you're not getting four hard matches in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I agree there. Yeah, and your routines cha change quite a lot compared to say two years ago. So um, a lot more, um, you know, j just tell us about some of the things that you do differently. Um, if we talk about the off-court stuff, obviously a lot more match analysis, that kind of thing. Yeah, damn, that's something I was going to say for my tip. <laughs> okay, well, you can still say it for your tip, that's fine. But you're definitely doing a lot more of that. Um, and then you said before about your um, prehab type work, that kind of stuff. Again, that's different too, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm spending like a good 30 minutes before every session warming up properly, mobility, um, stretches, um, just making sure my body's good. I've had a few problems with shins and knees, as most squash, a lot of squash players do. So um, warming up has been a huge, a huge um, change that I've made. Because I used to just, you know, when I used to just finish school, hop on the court, do, do a few court sprints and then start hitting the ball, but no, now I'm I'm doing I'm doing things properly. Um, two sessions a day, that's something I'm doing now, at least. Um, the tournament block's a little bit different. Sometimes I have really really light sessions or have a morning off and do match analysis, but 
uh, during that off season block, you know, when we were, me, Louie and Joel were training, it was two sessions a day, um, pretty much two fitnesses a day and two hitting a day. Unless we had match play, then I'd just have um, sometimes just match play or one fitness with it. But yeah, um, two sessions a day, heaps and heaps of match analysis um, to sort out game plans and stuff like that. And yeah, warming up. Those are huge, the, the huge things that I've changed, I'd say. Anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, no, I think so. I think you've got results. I mean, obviously, uh, some of the weight work you did focused around uh, improved sort of mobility um, in the hips and what have you, and that's allowed you to sort of get deep into those corners and get out. Yeah, yeah. Um, weights and cycling as well. Yeah. Um, lots of Ks under my belt. Not as, not as many as 12, but no. I'm getting yeah. there, I'm getting there. Yeah. yeah, so that's helped a lot. Um, yeah, um, I think it's been huge for my, my shin problem as well because it means, you know, it's low impact stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's just getting into my muscles rather than my joints, you know, like ghosting does. So that's yeah. had a huge impact on my um, base fitness. Um, yeah, and weight, that's, that's been huge as well for my flexibility. Yeah, cool. cool. Um, so you, you've got your idea. What's your tip then for the young pros coming through? Or tips? Um, tip or tips? Yeah, I'll say, I'll say tips. So my first one is probably going to be match analysis um, of yourself and opponents you play a lot of the time and sorting out a game plan. And the game plan can change um, as they improve. But... Yeah, match analysis is huge. So, especially when you lose, um, finding out why you lost, it's not always just because they played well. You know, there's heaps and heaps of things you can do differently. Well, I've done a lot of match analysis on Evan, and I went from getting chopped three love in about 15 minutes to, you know, an hour <laughs> five theater. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I had a huge summer. So did he, though. So, um, pretty much I'll just match analysis, doing smaller things um, better, changing a few tactics. Um, and yeah, we're, and match analysis isn't just watching, obviously, it's writing things down, it's um, writing shots you want to add, um, things you want to do differently, um, where your errors are, where a lot of your winners are, your strengths, your weaknesses, and that helps you think about things that you want to train for as well. So if you, if you find your weaknesses, um, you can um, try and start making drills that will um, improve those areas of your game. And I think that's what we did really well in the summer. Yeah. So we found out what our weaknesses were and we made drills um, to benefit us in those areas. And I think that was huge for me, um, especially, um, you know, that forehand lob from the front of the court, which I'm starting to get now, especially against yes, the left hand. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. a huge, um, a huge, that, that shot just made a huge difference. And you don't, you don't think it will, but it does. So match analysis, um, especially coming, coming out of juniors, that's just something I never did. As a junior, I'd, always, I'd, I'd watch myself a little bit, but I would never um, get a pen out and get some paper out and actually um, write things down. So that's huge. Um, another thing would be working out the PSA system. So how many tournaments, so for an upcoming player that's just joined PSA, how many tournaments you need to play in a season, um, scheduling your events, scheduling other things you have with your life um, if, it, if that stops you playing an event, but making sure you get at least those 13 tournaments in. I think um, that's where, you know, we get so much out of um, having you as our manager in that regard, scheduling our events, and that, that makes a huge difference. Um, you know, you can, you can enter events where you know not many people will be playing because it's after a tough event, so those events you want to play, um, you know, back in the day when there was no COVID and Louis was traveling, you know, he got into that 30K That's that right. you found yeah. that you knew yeah. it was going to be big and he yeah. got in and he, and he played it and lost first round, but got unreal points and didn't, that, that's a tournament that took him to top 200, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it took him yeah. To look at why. So yeah. um, I'd say working out the system and how you can kind of, I wouldn't say cheat the system, but how you can use it to um, use it in your favor. So that's a huge thing. And um, then just training prop properly, obviously two sessions a day. And um, something that worked really well for me was what we like to call, what you like to call active recovery. 
So you don't always have to just have a rest day or a rest arvo. You can do something really light and just recover. So whether that's stretching, um, a 15 minute bike after a hard session, um, just or just by itself if you've had a hard week at the end of a week, um, get a road bike, go for a 30 minute ride, you know, things like that, um, that really help. Yeah, active recovery. So those are probably my my three things. Cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, and those are goodies, bro. Um, you know, uh, watching you firsthand, I know that's really worked for you. So that's really cool. Um, look, you're not just a squash player. Um, obviously, uh, you're loved up right now. And uh, perhaps even more importantly, you're also studying and you're doing a decent number of papers, which has kind of worked out for you with COVID where you're kind of stuck in NZ. So um, you're doing close to a full-time course, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. At the moment, um, I'm doing close to, yeah, I'm doing six papers this year. Um, first semester is actually really easy. I've only got one core paper and then two are elective. So for those of you who knows what that means, that's a lot easier than just doing three core papers. So um, second semester is a little bit harder, but I think most of the big tournaments, um, you know, Nats and stuff, um, are either in the first semester or at the start of the second semester. So shouldn't have too much of a, um, you know, shouldn't interrupt my squash too much. And it means, you know, I've got something else to think about um, when tournaments like Auckland Open get canceled, are uh, postponed. So it's good, <laughs> damn bad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's tough when exams come, obviously, as you know. Yes. But other than that, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it, it, it um, takes away from my training too much, which is good. Yeah, I think, I think you've got better at it. I mean, obviously, you've got better at getting through the study so that there's not the, the huge cram phase as, as much at the end. And, um, and, and, you know, certainly you're a lot better than your brother in terms of getting up early and getting some study in at the start of the day rather than yeah. sleeping, I, sleeping I, through the morning. Sleeping until <laughs> five then doing his first morning session at one. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shocker. Yeah. It's a shocker yeah. 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 Yeah, but um, yeah, no, that's been that's been good. I think that's something I really struggled with last year, isn't it? To the end of um, in that second semester at the end of the year, was um, yeah, taking that pressure off before tournaments because that that's something that I was meaning when I said preparing well for tournaments, like that's included. I'm um, making sure my studies and making sure I'm not worrying about anything that's due. Um, yeah. Quite uh, um, at the end of this year, how far through your degree will you be? Um, at the end of this year, I'll have three papers left. What's the thoughts? Um, what's the thoughts for um, twenty twenty two? Or is it is it too hard to think that far ahead with COVID and everything? Um, no. Well, I, I, we we want to get overseas as soon as we can, don't we? Um, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know, we want to get to the UK as soon as we can. Um, base ourselves over there, um, and just yeah, come across come up against um, better competition. You know, there's way more players over there. Um, our training might go down because of all the travel. Um, we know that Louis has been there for a few months and he's, he's done all that. It'll be, it'll be tough um, in terms of money as well. But um, that's just something you've got to do if you want to make it, isn't it? Can't hang around yeah. Hamilton playing satellites. Yeah. So yeah, we want to get over as soon as we can. Hopefully Aussie as well for some of those um, slightly weaker draws. Um, but lots of uh, lots of points up for grabs there. But yeah, that's that's the goal. Yeah. So yeah, next year's interesting with Com Games. Obviously, I want to I want to make that team as well. Okay. So we'll just have to um, wait and see. Might actually be a bit more doubles then. Might well, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, for anyone outside the top fifty, you're not going to get into Com Games on your singles. Um, and so then arguably you've got to get in on your doubles. Um, but we don't play a lot of doubles. And uh, so it kind of gets interesting around selection policy and that kind of thing. I guess from your point of view, it's you really want that opportunity knowing that you may or may not um, be a contender in 2022, but you'd like to think you would be in 2026. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to think I'd at least make the next one. Otherwise, I might have to hang my records up. <laughs> well, you know, I think you might make this one, but I th but in terms of selection, 
um, if you when you when you do make 2026, you'll be a lot better for it if you've been to 2022. That's for sure. It's that experience that you want, isn't it? Yeah. Um, with that, but we'll see. We'll I'll do everything I can, and we'll That's just cool. uh, hope it's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, how do you, just on the double side? How do you find the change in tactics and doubles? It's still something you're trying to figure out right now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm obviously, I haven't done much. Um, doubles analysis, um, patterns. Me and Louis are working on it a little bit at the moment. Um, we're chipping away at it, but it's it's way different to singles. Completely different. Like there's no, yeah. not many patterns that you do in singles that you, that you want to emulate in doubles. So, um, it's just working out what works. Um, figuring out what your opponents are good at. Um, and yeah, trying to trying to make game plans, but also just being in sync with your partner is huge as well. So obviously, I'm lucky that I get to play with my brother, and we can do all the match analysis we we need because um, we live together. But yeah, just knowing your partner really well and their game really well helps. Yeah. But yeah, heaps heaps of um, heaps of tactics that I need to that we need to sort out um, if we want to be competitive. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's quite challenging right now because there's not enough big court doubles events. There's lots and lots of club doubles uh, on singles courts. Um, there's not much that you guys can do on big courts. I agree with that. And it's way different. You don't, you don't get much out of playing on a singles court. Um, it's just tactically, it's just so much different on a doubles court when you can open up um, the court. You know, you can open up areas of the court that you don't even have on the singles court so it's just yeah it's, you can't really compare the two really so we don't really find that there's much benefit out of playing doubles tournaments on singles courts because it's just so different but yeah maybe in terms of tactics or um yeah trying to get in sync with your with your partner that that can help obviously if you if you just um play with them more but yeah for me and Louis, i think we need to get on a doubles court as much as we can and play play um some players on there to try and sort out tactics agreed Agreed. now um what's it like playing psa with your brother um i guess for for some people that's a bit of a dream really um you know he's he's ranked three in new zealand you're ranked four in new zealand that's pretty cool at your age and i guess your parents um have to be pretty pretty happy with that um what's it like playing top sport with your brother um, it's not it's not a team sport no no i'm i i think it's a blessing like i'm really lucky because he's older obviously so he does everything first um he's better at the moment as well his rankings higher so he's been to the uk um he's brought all his all his knowledge back from the uk um at training and stuff as well like helps me out a lot especially with losses like overcoming losses and trying to um yeah stay mentally strong um, I've learned heaps from from um, his experiences and what he's done. So yeah, I think I'm I'm actually really lucky and in he, that regard. Yeah, you you guys are completely different personalities. I mean, you look different, um, even though the ref on Saturday started calling Luamba Timwa. <laughs> yeah, but because it's pretty obvious to me, you're not identical twins. But personality-wise, you I wouldn't say you're opposites, but it's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, our game styles are way different. Our builds are way different. Um, yeah, we're a lot. We're a lot different in terms of squash players. But how we how we think and how we train and what we like is quite similar. Okay. We get along really well. Um, and yeah, that helps with um, yeah, when it comes to things like losses and talking to each other and helping each other out. Um, game plans, coaching. Um, yeah, just getting along with each other. We're really, probably really close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Compared to other brothers. So, yeah, I'm actually really lucky. Because I could have a brother who, um, you know, most older brothers, you know, can get quite jealous of the younger brothers. Um, so I'm lucky that, you know, he just wants to give me his knowledge. He just wants to help me out. So I'm lucky in that in that regard, for sure. Yeah, because younger guys always get spoiled. Yeah, you're the younger, the younger <laughs> no he doesn't seem to be i mean yeah i've always said that um i, I don't know why i say this i always think he's quite strong mentally um 
uh, and a lot of times that makes sense. And then other times I wonder why I say that because he does uh, <laughs> so many stupid things. But I, I don't think they're related. I mean, strong mentally for squash, yeah. And that resi- that resilience and um, that sort of uh, positive mindset um, has paid off for him big time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that rubs off on me as well, seeing how, how he deals with certain situations. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been been really good. Hey, look, thanks for your time, bro. I mean, obviously, looking forward to um, seeing you back on court. Hopefully, that's soon. Hopefully, we get the news we all want on the weekend or before from the government. And um, and if not, there's going to be plenty of events anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, more time to train, if not, isn't it? Yeah, no. Hopefully, hopefully the tournaments go ahead. It'd be nice to get on court again, play some tournaments. I keep saying this, but. Um, we're pretty grateful for all of the efforts that the clubs, the districts um, and various other people, national body are doing to put these events on and to make them happen uh, under difficult circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to say a big thanks to Shelley Kitchen and all the stuff she's doing with high performance um, Squash New Zealand. She's, uh, she's doing an amazing job. Um, also the rest of Squash New Zealand and yeah, a huge thanks to the clubs for putting on all the events. Um, I know it's a struggle trying to find all the prize money um, and especially with all this COVID stuff, you know, um, Ed Nepson still did that, oh, sorry, Henderson still did that tournament under level two and that's huge, huge for us um, upcoming PSA players who really need the point. So a huge thanks um, to that club as well, all the people that um, helped that go ahead. Um, Ed Nepson and, yeah, John Fletcher and Squash Auckland, he's doing an incredible job as well. So, yeah, thank you. Nice one. Okay, bro. Take care. Sweet. Thanks, Thompson. Cheers, brother. Take care, mate.